Hi there, my name is FixFox, and welcome back to Factorio. This is a fantastic series. I love this modification for the story missions, and we are on to scenario two. We are about an hour into this playthrough, and the goal is to go from one objective to the next as quickly as possible. There's no time to build extra infrastructure. We just got to go, go, go. And so with that being said, folks, let's dive right back in. So we started off at this main base that's kind of over to the, I don't know, what do you call this? The mid left, I suppose. We started off in this general area and we drove our car up to the north through this section here out of the main gates. You can see it's just a war zone here and we've more or less had the choice to go right or left. We decided to go up this right path and that took us up to the upper right corner where we have a little bit of crude oil. We have uh, some basic structures that were already present. We flushed out this base and now we are just making red and green science. Not too big of an issue, that's okay. And our new objective is now to locate additional resource rich areas, have at least 10 pump jacks in operation. We currently have one in operation. That's not going to cut it. So let's just start building all the pump jacks that we're going to need. There's four coming up. And then let me get just a couple more resources here. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That should be all that we need. And with that, my hope is, is that we're going to be able to quickly find the pump jacks, get them powered, probably set up another power like base over here. Um, Hopefully we can find more water, more coal, and I'm guessing that we're going to find what we're looking for down the road and this time instead to the left. We could have gone left, we could have gone right. I think that I think that we're going to find a very similar setup over here, uh, over there, as we found over here. So, anywho, let's make this happen right now. I am so confused. Oh my gosh, I just made chemical plants. No, I meant to make pump jacks and I made chemical plants. What's wrong with me? Well, we've got 11 chemical plants now. That's good. That's going to be useful for something. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is off to a great start. But you know what? If you know me, you know that I don't like to save scum. I don't like to go back and um, redo things. I like to live with my mistakes. That's a mistake. But here's the thing. In Factorio, you are always, and I mean always, going to use pretty much anything that you plop down at least once. The exception is something like if you accidentally make, I don't know, 500 power armors yeah probably not going to use all those power armors otherwise you're gonna find a use for almost everything in a recent playthrough of mine i made a very big mistake and i'd actually started to make the robo ports and i'll let you guess how many robo ports i made long story short it was one full steel chest worth of robo ports will i eventually use that probably Am I very happy that i've devoted that many resources when i was trying to get my mega base up and running uh no Really, I was not. So uh, just since we're here, let's make sure that we don't waste this material. Have at least 10 pump jacks in operation. It doesn't actually keep count for us, and that's just fine for me, I think. We're going to get plenty of these raw materials here anyway. That's one, two, three, four. We need six more. Let's go find six more oil patches. And I do think that they have to be powered and running. Uh, it's possible, though, that I can just have a bunch of coal on me. Right now, I got about 250 units of coal possible that I can use that to make a little, I don't know, a little basic steam operation. Heck, maybe I could even uh, bottle some water, put it into some of these barrels, which is very weird, but could totally work. And then I can transport steam with me. An even better solution would probably be actually here. You know what? Let's just plan on doing that. Just this might be the weirdest thing you've ever seen, but let's actually plan on doing that. And bottling up some steam. Where's my steam? No, where's my steam? I really want to bottle up some steam so I can take it with me. So that way I just always have power. So I can just meet that objective. And just kind of go a little bit crazy with it. I think I'm just going to have to do it like... You can't actually bottle steam, can you? You can put steam into train cars. You could put steam into these big storage tanks you can't put steam into canisters wow for some reason i just always assumed that you could do that and there wouldn't be any problems i guess not we might as well build a couple of these little basic kind of structures we haven't gotten and we'll just go from there whatever it's fine uh let's make sure we have plenty of raw materials iron plates copper plates you never know if you're going to need those out in the wild blue yonder and i don't want to have to come back just because i was short for like a hundred hundred somethings anyway Okay, but this is all good. I think that we can head out and we are fairly well 
put together as far as our defenses go, just in case biters do come. And on the road we go, looking forward to finding adventure somewhere out there in the great wide blue yonder. Whoa. I don't know if you have any problem with driving vehicles. I don't usually have problems with driving vehicles, but I really do when I'm trying to play just in this one kind of windowed mode. I try not to zoom in and out when I play because it makes me sick and so I don't want to make you sick. I've mentioned that before and I'll say it again because it bears repeating. Aha. And then otherwise, otherwise, I am out here trying to do much good for the people. So I was correct in my supposition that if we'd gone left, we would have found another base that we could uh, use. Here we went to the right. Here there's this to the left. But the thing that kind of bothers me is this. We don't actually have enough oil, right? We currently have four over here. One, two, three, four crude oils. One, two, three, four over here. So we're going to need to find another two on top of this. Let's actually find more crude oil before we do anything else. Because if I only have to set up one base, that's what I would prefer to do. It looks like the trees are kind of thin here. I can just crash into trees and make a big mess. And let's just explore. Um, there was a great comment. Oh, and I'm actually going to take the time to figure out who made that comment. Give me just half a second. Uh, it was a wonderful comment on the previous video here, and they indicated that we need to do a good job of uh, searching around and trying to find some more fun stuff out there. And so I am looking forward to seeing uh, what else we can find. It was uh, bug burnout. Uh, they said, good luck. Some missions can be pretty difficult. Also waiting for mission 10. Green flag says it should be done by the end of the summer. Also be sure to explore thoroughly. There are secrets that can help you along. And I do uh, worry that we didn't explore as much as we probably should have in the first scenario we're not gonna make that mistake again these are story missions and one of the best things is to just come across something that is a little bit of a secret like this like this if we had stopped earlier we wouldn't have known that there was all of this extra opportunity here this looks like oh goodness this looks like it was a former oil operation yeah, with the steam and with the coal power here, it looks like once again, only four of the oil. So four, eight, 12, that's going to be all that we need. Let's see if we can find a little bit more out here, though. Maybe there's just a little bit more to be found. Maybe we need to get some stone, get some landfill and go across that bridge. That looks like that might be a little bit of a river. What else? Okay, too many biters there. We're not going to deal with them. The nice thing is that if we do build into this base, the trees should help eat up a lot of the pollution. And that'll keep us safe for a good long time. And this is not time wasted, by the way, as we are going through this wild terrain. We do have things being researched at the moment. And so long as things are being researched, I don't feel bad about exploring. This is time well spent. Always. So here we go here, and then it looks like there's another break in the trees here. I say that there's a break in the trees, and then immediately I just hit a tree and make my own way. Cool. A little bit of a base here. Tell you what, let's just take the time, and let's let's work our way through this base. It's going to take some time. It's going to take some, some resources that we don't really want to use at the moment, but we're probably going to end up taking out this base later anyway. Let's just do it now. Let's just do it now. Okay, and on we go. We are officially up to medium biters. There's a big worm. There are some problems here. And by the way, this is the only car that we have. We have not gotten up to car tech. We've still got a lot to do to get up to cars. And so uh, this is highly concerning because this medium biter is taking so much punishment from us. If we lose this car, we just lose the car. And then we have lost our major tactical advantage that we have. So for that reason, we're officially going to just run right past these guys. Uh, from here on out, that is just a barrier that we're going to have to deal with later. Maybe grenades will work better. Uh, definitely if we get into military tech and we're able to get to things like poison um, in the poison capsules, that could work pretty well. Even a shotgun maybe could work. Maybe a shotgun could work. But otherwise, this is always for from here on out going to be a place we just drive right by and then go and do other things for. Let's try to avoid taking some damage from these guys. They are still following us. Wow, lots of lots of biters. Iron ore patches. 
And there was this, we, we'd mentioned kind of like a, a river looking type of thing right here. Just interesting that there's this kind of tributary that is, that looks, that looks like that was, that's not normal. Usually you see lakes, you don't see rivers like that. And that makes me wonder if there's something right in there. So uh, for that, we are going to kind of continue. I don't know. Should we try and get a little bit closer to that? There's much to be explored there, but I'm worried I'm going to incur the wrath of some serious biters. Looks like there's one big biter base there. Maybe there's something in the very center, but I just can't see it for now. We're going to assume that later when we get some radars out, that they'll be close enough that they can view some more of this stuff. We run out of some research. Let's go on to projectile damage and then shooting speed. Obviously, we're going to use it. Wow, this is the biggest coal patch I've seen so far. Okay, and what else? Anything else? Something tells me that I shouldn't waste my time exploring to the south. I, I can't tell you why, but I just feel like that's just not a good idea. This is this is a man-made lake. This was definitely made by Green Flag. This is not something that you should just expect to see in a normal playthrough of Factorio. Just the way that that juts through is very intriguing. Okay, and then from here on out, it looks like this is probably just going to be... I mean, maybe there's something to the north there, but at that point, then we're, we're dealing with way more terrain than we want to try and cover. I haven't found any more oil, though. Could it be that we just have three bases that we have to operate off of? It's quite possible. And I'm not finding anything else that would make me think that we have some major oil refining factory somewhere. Uh, we've already found something pretty excellent. I think that that's just going to be what we should expect to carry us uh, on to the next section. So um, we're going to explore in a roundabout way as we're heading to the southwest and then curving back into the southeast just to see if there is anything else out here as we are heading home just meandering sort of on the promenade by the way i was watching a documentary on the titanic recently and that promenade deck where the first class passengers could above air lounge and have a nice time on the deck that thing was a thing of beauty my word the titanic is one of those things that's so fascinating to me because the grandeur of the ship was wonderful look at this we do have nuclear excellent excellent good to know and yeah and we're gonna head back now and a lot of the things that have remained at the bottom of the ocean to this day versus the things that are gone is just always so interesting to me to compare and contrast it's so very cool and you know tragedy of course but of course i think that we all understand that there comes a point where you can start to joke about things like enough time has passed that we can say well that happened and it just kind of is what it is um <laughs> you know yeah enough time has passed you, you can't say "Ooh, too soon man too soon the titanic and, and all the things that have happened to it all the lives that were lost. It's like, yeah, it's a tragedy. We've admitted it's a tragedy. And now let's move on to just how freaking cool it is. World War II enthusiasts probably can identify with this, uh, this thought process because yeah, tragedy and horrible. And yet it's so cool to get into history and just see all the many, you know, technological advancements that happened because of that, the strategy, the way that certain battles shook out and then to theorize, you know, what could have happened if things had gone a little bit differently and so on and so forth. We have 12 units of coal remaining, we're definitely going to get back with no problem, but I am keeping an eye on that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Not finding. Aha. Aha. Look what I found. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is all we need. Now, the problem with using this as our little area to build from would be that we are right in the middle of everything and there's not a whole lot of trees. And that's number one. Number two, you're pretty far away from power. And then number three, you don't have any extra things coming for you. Like here, you got iron deposits and coal and stone. Same here, same here. Here, it's just for oil. I could, I could probably just plop it down just to meet the requirements of this mission. Tell you what, let's just do that. If I need to build more things, I will. And we just met the objective. I should build more advanced weapons for defense, maybe laser. Okay. 
I'm, I'm okay with that. Laser turret is now available in the tech tree. Research laser turret, build laser turrets. We need seven of those. Uh, you know, we've just met the objective. If I want to come back and do oil later, I will. Um, we've, we've quote unquote met the objective. That was always our goal. We will come back later and probably flush out our oil a little bit more. It'll definitely be over in this area when we do it. I think that operating off of two bases will be plenty. You don't need three bases at this time. Um, I just don't see us needing that. Maybe when we get into some sort of situation where trains are going to be useful for us, trying to get resources back to this main base. And the reason I'm saying that is because that was the preamble text. It indicated that we were going to, as this engineer, head out into the big wide world. Where am I going? Head into the big wide world in order to bring materials back to the main base. So I'm guessing that at some point trains are going to be very, very useful for that. As I crash through every single tree, whoever built their nest, whichever bird built their nest into that particular tree. Yep. I have no shame. No shame. Sucks to be you, man. We're owls. We're a protected species. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm all for you guys doing well. But right now, my needs supersede yours. And so that's my tree. My tree. Interesting that um, it looks like Green Flag made the the base for that little biter nest. He made it in the cliffs. So that way, it's even harder to defeat them. Ah, and now we see it's this cute, cool little tributary. That's so cool. And the way that he just kind of designed this map. Really love that. That's really smashing to see. And I hope that there's more of that in Factorio 2.0, which, by the way, we have an official release date on Factorio 2.0. For those of you who have been waiting, maybe you're like me and you said, um, I don't actually want to continue playing a whole lot of Factorio because I don't want to burn myself out before Factorio 2.0 comes along. Yeah, uh, we've got we've got some good stuff coming. Um, and I think it's going to be October. Is that what it's going to be? I think it's like October of this year. So good stuff coming. And I'm excited very, very much for Factorio 2.0. Um, if you don't buy the advanced version, the 2.0 version, um, that's fine. Even the base level game is going to get a lot of quality of life buffs. For example, I think that raised rails is going to be something that you don't actually have to purchase. That's just going to come as a standard upgrade for any base level of Factorio that you may purchase. They already have. And then on top of that, uh, there's just going to be some additional content that's going to be behind the 2.0 version if you take the time to purchase that out which i am always i mean i'm gonna do it i'm not here to tell you how to live your life but i'm gonna be doing that and i'm probably gonna see if i can as i've mentioned before schedule some kind of minor surgery i'm going to go to my wife and say honey you know how you always wanted me to get the snip snip yeah finally i've, I've come around i've decided it's a good idea oh honey i'm so excited that's absolutely, by the way, not a true scenario at all, because we are still in the process of having kids. We are we are still uh, working on our family, fleshing that out just a little bit more. So, yeah, <laughs> that's that's a fib. I'm fibbing and I apologize for the fib. Um, but, you know, some kind of minor surgery, you know, something. So that way I have an excuse. OK, I am going to bring this base to life, by the way. I know that we're working on building laser turrets. But we will get there when we get there. Um, I think that just having oil process started up can be very, very useful. Let's just get a little bit going here. Even if it's just this one little section, that'll be fine for me. And so I'm going to get one offshore pump so I can bring water into some boilers. One, two, four. I don't know exactly what's left over here, what's not. Looks like we're going to need one more steam engine on top of what I've already surmised. So here... It's going to take a lot of pipes to make this happen, but it'll work. Okay. Yeah, this should be just fine. I don't think I need six boilers. I think that two is going to be fine. Here. And here and here. Okay. And it looks like they did this nifty little thing. Green flag or whoever helped him with this mod. Um, it looks like they are just a fan of having this extra little niche, this little, this little pipe. And it's not bad at all. It's really not a bad thing. It's just not the way I do it. 
And that highlights, of course, the primary principle in Factorio of, dude, play the way you want to play. Nobody's going to tell you you shouldn't play the way you want to play. There are there already is actually this offshore pump here. So we're actually good. I thought that we might have to do a little bit more to bring that up to code. Looks like not. Okay. But otherwise, let's go here. And then we do have steam coming on down. We do have electricity. Yes, everything is being powered. Let's use that then to bring some of this coal over here and power, I don't know, two of these electric miners. That should be sufficient. Let's just do two electric miners as we bring power up. One and two. Okay. There you go. So we got a nice little system here, and I actually don't want to over-engineer this. I really don't because... There are lots of trees here, but the less pollution I put out in this section, the less likely this base is to get attacked by biters. And so I'm going to want to try my best to avoid getting any attention over here. I'm just trying to get some oil production going and more than just oil, but also the actual um, petroleum. Petroleum, of course, is the product you get after oil. And that just seems like a good idea to me. So we're hooked up here. Just need to do a little bit here and here to there so now we got oil coming in we are slowly going to start making some petroleum and i'm actually going to do something nifty so let's see this goes to here petroleum's coming in here i don't know where this was supposed to go we're not going to do anything with that right now and we're going to power this pump oh and we need to actually get circuit network asap we're at 96 percent on the weapon shooting speed i'm gonna let that happen but i only want about an extra 500 to a thousand petroleum in this storage tank right here and i want to limit this solid fuel production down to just 50 units at any given time and the way i can do that is by using the circuit network if you've if you've never used the circuit network by the way i don't know should i give you a quick tutorial or not I'm going to give you just a quick overview of what I like to do when it comes to the circuit network here for fluids, because fluids are a big struggle for a lot of people. People say, yeah, I love the game until I get into fluids and fluid calculations and how it moves and this and that. And part of the reason is because they say, well, I've got all of this extra fluid right now. We're just doing basic oil refining. So we're going from crude oil into the petroleum gas. After you get advanced oil processing, then you have the heavy, light, and uh, petroleum-based type of oils. And that's great. That's fine. That's wonderful. But if you have things out of balance, then you find yourself either trying to make more storage tanks to hold the resources that you're not using, or you accidentally crack your heavy and your light oils into petroleum oil more often than you need, and then you don't have enough of your heavier light oil for the other things that you need there. And the best thing, the very best thing you can do is use pumps, to prevent yourself from over or under filling certain processes. And again, I'll show you that once we get there in just a second. We're gonna ignore most of this other stuff here. Uh, I am gonna get just a couple more of these electric miners. Mm. Ought I to? We're really just trying to stay, stay pat with what we have. We don't wanna, again, leave a big footprint, but I am gonna get one miner over here just because I want to start making some general smelting here. Just just one little itty bitty bit of brick. And and I'm gonna before I leave here, I'm gonna put in just the solid fuel. It's gonna last the very longest. And that solid fuel is gonna go a long, long way for us. But then this brick can be used for a lot of stuff. In theory, I could probably... I could probably uh, set aside some stone for landfill later. Uh, I think that we're overdoing this. Now that I think about it, like I'm setting this up just for a long-term thing. But again, I don't want to have to defend this base so much. And every little bit of pollution is going to matter. That's why we're going to try and limit our production. That's why we're going to do what we do. So... This is eventually going to back up. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. This tank is officially full. Here, we're going to get one pump here. 
And this pump is going to be the start of us using the circuit network as we go on to military two. Um, so we got our red wires, green wires, uh, arithmetic combinators, decider combinators, constant combinators, power switch, and the programmable speaker. We're just going to use red wire for now. It doesn't really matter at the moment if we use red wire, or green wire. They do the same thing. One's just red, one's just green. And so that way you can send two different signals along the same basic path if they're both hooked up. What we just did is we just left clicked here and here. And so now this pump is reading the contents of the storage tank. The mode of operation, this is circuit connected to network 344, and we're currently on read contents. We are reading the contents of the storage tank. And now, based off of the contents that are being read here, we can enable or disable this pump. Right now, we are disabled by the control behavior. And so it makes sense that I only want to pump oil when I am low on oil. So if oil in this tank is less than, in this instance, we're just going to say 200 units, 200 units of oil, then this pump will turn on. Until that time, if this is at 220K, we don't need to keep pumping. We do not need to keep pumping. And so when this goes down to 200, then we will start to pump more oil. And that's going to prevent these pump jacks from just filling this all the way up and, and things of that nature. We're going to use all this oil before we do anything else. That's going to help keep our footprint low. Keep our footprint as low as we can get it. And in that same regard, I don't want this petroleum tank to fill up right now we are at 381 units of petroleum out of 25k possible so there's a very small amount here i only want to put in petroleum when it's less than 500 units that's the only time i want this to work and because the process here with the solid fuel because that's actually going to draw from the storage tank itself you can see the petroleum gas 503 out of 25k 501 Every time it falls below, the pump will turn on and try and force all the liquid out of here and into the storage tank. So in that way, I have now made sure that I'm only going to make the fluids that I need, etc., etc. If you are a longtime Factorio player, everything I'm saying is something that you are very well aware of. And if you're new to Factorio, and if I'm going a little too fast for you, there's some excellent tutorials out there. I'd recognize, I would recommend Nilaus, um, N-I-L-A-U-S does an excellent job with Factorio, and I very much appreciate his perspective and his calm manner and the way that he conveys things. Uh, just if you want a little bit of a deeper dive into the, the circuit network. But notice that we didn't even use arithmetic combinators, decider combinators, constant combinators, or power switches. We just simply hooked up the wire from one section to the other and said that we are reading the contents of X so that Y can do its job. This thing we're, we're checking out what its status is, so that way we can determine what we do with this other feature over here. And you can connect lots of different things together, um, and it'll be fun for you to just try it out. Just see what you can or can't connect if this is your first time looking at that. We are going to get military science now. It's not going to be too big of a deal, and that should help us a lot, actually. We did pick up a couple of these, a couple of these gun turrets. I'm going to just place them down like this. I'm going to pick up some of these other wall sections. They are much better suited purely in defense of these structures, rather this military structure here, than anything else. This cannot fall. If this gun turret falls, then all this production is going to go by the wayside, and that's going to be really, really sad. And so we're defending all that. We're going to try and put another gun turret right here. So that way we can defend this general section. And then I'm going to put one more up here. Probably right, probably right there, just in case biters come in this direction. And then and this is what they hit first. I want to make sure that I meet the biters head on. 15 wall sections. Is that enough to enclose this? It just is with three sections left. So 12 sections of walls will enclose one gun turret. Okay, and if we check our map, we turn off the pollution, we can see what the coverage of our base is. Right here, we got some vulnerabilities. Right here, we have some vulnerabilities, but even this should be very helpful. We will see about this pollution cloud. I'm hoping that the trees, again, soak up a lot of pollution. And this is me not rushing for the next objective, but I'm still trying to be a little bit smart. It'll be nice to have petroleum up and running later, just in case that'll help us. Oh, and let's drop a radar turret, by the way. I want to always be able to see what's going on over here, just in case, just in case. 
Let's actually put it in a section where turrets will try and defend it. Just like that. Okay. Ouch. 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 Get out of there. If I had robots right now and they had repair packs, they would all be very, very mad at me because I would be destroying everything that they held dear. Um, let's get solar energy. We still need to research the laser turret. Uh, that is part of the military science, by the way. And so uh, getting military science just a second ago, that's going to be pretty useful for us. I wonder how long these resource patches are going to hold out. We're again at this one to the right. I wonder how long that one's going to hold out versus the one at the left. And if I'm going to need to expand or not, we can check in just one second. Uh, 85 K iron, 72 K copper, plenty of stone, plenty of coal. So we will see, we will wait and see. Trust the old car. It, it did it. It made it all the way there. Good job, car. Good job. Okay. Uh, since I've been gone, we've run out of some stuff there. And because I still have some more burners, I'm going to do, I'm going to do this. I'm just going to get some stone going in one box. So that way I can later make more. What do, what do I want? I want more landfill possibilities in the future. Plenty of these engine units. We've got grenades now. Let's make sure we just have a couple on hand and then let's rush towards the laser turrets. We don't really need oil for the laser turrets. If I recall, laser turrets have been unlocked. Let's find them and let's work backwards. Oh, we do. We need plastic. We need sulfur. We need red circuits. Wow. We actually need a lot. Okay. So because we're going to need plastics, let's think we've got plenty of oil here. I don't think we're actually going to need to do much to get this up and running. Let's just work our way backwards from the laser turret. We'll go plastics into red circuits, red circuits into chemical science, chemical science. We'll then go from there. So we got a long ways to go, but we will get started right now. And thankfully we've got our one oil refinery and we've got <laughs> some other fun stuff. Uh, we're just going to do basic oil processing in this instance. We could do a long setup. I just don't think it's going to be that necessary. I want, I want this right here. One oil refinery is going to be absolutely overwhelmed by the demand that we're placing upon it. But for now, I'm going to make this work later. We're probably going to expand what only to four, probably just to four. Generally, I like to do my oil production in multiples of five. Um, I find that it works pretty well with the general ratios that you find with your oil processing and such. Um, that's not going to be critically important, but it is a thing. It is something to consider. Let's start getting some of the other means necessary to build up this base. We've got undergrounds. We've got regular pipes. We just got our first storage tank. Let's put everything off to the side here. We're going to go here, here. Well, and this is why you want space. Here and here. And I'm saying that because um, getting the fluids out, generally I find it's best to go kind of to this more Western, Eastern type of way, Eastern, Western manner. Later, we're going to put a pump here that's going to limit how much petroleum we're using. There's a big, long uh, chain of events that will help us out there. That's going to take a while. We will get there. We will get there. Okay. But we're getting petroleum, albeit very slowly. Let's start to ramp this up. We've already got some plans on how it's going to look in short order. There's no reason not to. We've got plenty of oil just from these four pump jacks we currently have. So we're going to pick up some additional materials, iron gears, definitely iron plates, definitely green circuits, a little more copper. One, two, three more. And then we've already built up all of these chemical plants and that's going to go immediately into our production of plastic. Let me just clear a space here rather than build south of the oil refineries. I tend to find it's best to layer my oil cracking going from heavy and light oils down into the petroleum. I find it's easier to do that 
in a top to bottom kind of manner. And so we're going to continue with that. It helps me stay organized. It's what I'm used to. Could I be flexible and do something else? Absolutely. And you sure could. And you, in fact, sure should. And you should let me know how well it works out for you because it should work out pretty easy. You just have to be, um, you know, just crafty and just aware of what, what your goals are and what you want to meet, what your production values should be in your mind. But for me, I'm going to do what's most comfortable to me at the moment. It's going to look just like this. Okay. So let's just get small really small bits of oil processing going and i'm gonna do it like this i don't know if we're gonna have cliff explosives i hope that we do later but until i know for sure i'm gonna be very careful very careful indeed with what i'm gonna expect out of this thing i'm gonna have the two belt approach and we're going to be using the yellow inserters. Actually, it's going to be blue. Blue inserters on the inside and red inserters on the outside. Do I have red inserters set up? No, I've just been handcrafting these. I don't really have much of a mall at this time. So we will figure that in a second here and here, here and here. No, here. And so this belt is going to be our pull, and this is going to be our exit belt. So this belt is going to go where this is going to be where plastic comes out of, and this is going to be the belt where the coal comes in. We have coal up here. We're going to use uh, some of these electric miner drills that we've already set up here. Oh my goodness. Look, we are actually out of, we are actually out of our, Oh, there. I did not anticipate that. I did not see that coming. That's crazy. Huh? I would not have thought. Okay. So we're going to ramp up the coal production there for just one second. A couple more electric miners. This is very messy. This is not how I usually build my big structures. Usually I'm a much more organized long term, but for now I just, I can't help it. I feel like if I'm really rushing from objective to objective, that it demands something different of me. I just really think it does. So for that reason, I'm doing stuff differently with some good, uh, good principles behind it. Sure. But definitely suboptimally. And maybe that's actually the best thing for this reason. If you look at the bases that people generally build, they start to look very much the same and they're a little bit sad because it's great. I mean, every base is beautiful, right? It's, it's beautiful, but there's something about the aesthetic of the opening factorial screen where you see just the base built among the crags and so on and so forth that just really makes it pop. That's the aesthetic that I think we are all really trying to get to. And because that aesthetic has been reached a little bit in the main section down here, I mean, building in and out of cliffs and just building wherever you can without flattening everything. You know, I mean, look at this. This is far from ideal. Um, it just makes me think that maybe I should try and and relax. Take it easy. Don't be so hard on yourself. You know, just just have a nice time. Whoa, I actually thought that that I'm having a hard time. I'm trying to make this not look so bad. OK, I guess that'll be fine. Yeah, OK, that'll be fine. I just didn't want the didn't want the power poles with their wires to just be ugly. See, even though I say that some things just don't matter, um, I immediately turn my brain off and say, actually, no, this does. I just can't stand it to not be a little bit better than this. What the heck is going on here? No, by no mineable resources. We're just going to change this up a little bit. Keeping an eye on our general production. And then otherwise, uh, we do finally have three more oil refineries. Let's do it just like this. And here. And here. And then we leave room later for perhaps getting into advanced oil processing. Currently at 3.5 K. That's a lot of 
oil so far more to come but as soon as we're able to get up to plastics we're gonna be good to go Ugh, these solar panels why am i researching so slowly we've got the ability to make better time than what we're currently doing let's let's do that let's increase that increase that we've got at least room for one two three four five more and that's gonna increase our rate of research generally i do like to do a structure that looks a lot closer to this with like some serious belt weaving in there where you have uh, let's see probably like right here and here out to here and then you'll have uh something like that and the way it'll work is that you'll have not just yellow belts but also red belts and so you're going to go to here and then up to here on one side and then there's going to be a red underground belt that uh, stops here and then goes to here and so you're going to have four belts that's going to be feeding all of your labs and on those four belts that essentially gives you eight sides there's seven different types of science red blue green black white yellow purple and so eight belts devoting half of their sides one of their sides uh to a certain color is gonna be just fine not eight four four belts times two because there's two sides this solar energy is really bumming me out though like do i really need solar i don't think i do if we're trying to rush let's just get the plastic now that's that's really the priority let's get the plastic now we'll take some time just to fill out a little bit more of our infrastructure and i do count lights as infrastructure very important probably after plastics we're actually going to increase the lab speed it's going to be a little bit of a investment but it'll make everything else go much faster okay and then other things we should probably do we need to clear out these biters as well and then since we're working on getting plastic and such we can probably actually take some time to go to the other base and get a couple of things set up over there not a lot but a little bit anyway so let's do that um let's take again some more raw resources so we're fully stocked and ready to go including this time belts what kind of ammunition do we have we've got about 300 rounds of ammunition plus a couple of grenades not great but that should be enough to get us started anyway okay so let's go kill these biters to the northwest and do some aggressive expansion. And this is really going to be more about preventing problems in the long term. We've cleared out all the other nearby biters. These guys shouldn't be too big of a deal. Uh, so long as we don't run into any other big worms, we're going to be okay. I'm probably going to need something very much fire based to deal with bigger worms than than that. Okay. And there's one medium worm here. Very scary. Oh, actually, no, it's a small worm. And I'm officially in a, in a bad way. I've backed myself into a corner. And if we lose this car, we just lose the car. No, we're in trouble. We're an idiot. We're an idiot. We're an idiot. We're so dumb!